Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's episode of Stanford Live. We are chatting with Megan Winslow, who is our inpatient rehab manager, um, just learning everything we can today about our physical therapy department. So if you have ever been curious about becoming a physical therapist, if you are a current physical therapist looking for a new home, you know, we're hoping to kind of tell you more about why picking Stanford could be the right now move for you to do next. So without further ado, I will be introducing Megan Winslow. Hi, everyone. Um, like Carly said, my name is Megan Winslow. I'm a physical therapist by training. Um, I am a manager in the rehab department. There is currently three of us, and we're looking to hire um, a fourth manager um, here at Stanford Healthcare. We are just on the inpatient side um, of the hospital, but we do have outpatient neuro and outpatient ortho, but those are separate um, managers. So um, I have been at Stanford. This is my 20th year, which is a little bit crazy to say. Um, I have worked here per diem. I've worked here full time. I've been kind of all throughout the hospital. And then just about six years or so ago, um, I went into the manager role. So um, just to give you a little bit of background um, about Stanford, look at my notes here. So Stanford is a level one trauma center. Um, we are across two buildings. We opened a new hospital in um, the end of 2019, right before COVID. Um, so we're across two hospitals. Um, we have six ICUs, 27 AAUs, we call them, which is um, acuity adaptable units. Um, we're stroke certified, VAD certified through the Joint Commission. It's a pretty high acuity um, hospital. Um, we have two helipads and life light coming in and out um, pretty frequently. It's fast paced and it's a teaching hospital. Um, we are unique in that we're connected to Stanford University, Stanford Medical School, the adult hospital at Stanford Healthcare, and then there's also Lucille Packard Children's Hospital. Um, Lucille Packard is a separate employer, um, but we have collaborated, um, collaborated with them in the past, um, use of equipment and that sort of thing. Um, we hire for our department, um, not for any spe specific area, but we try to get people oriented to other areas. Um, through orientations and working with your manager on the goals that you have. Um, let's see her. Um, weekends were kind of unusual in that we do one full weekend um, every six weeks, unless you're part time, and then it's either one weekend a month or we kind of alternate like every other Saturday or every other Sunday, um, where most hospitals are doing one weekend a month. So it's a little bit different. Um, we do have pretty good benefits and Labrina from HR will talk a little bit more about this, but we have um, five conference training days per year. Um, so those are not part of your PTO, but um, for going to continuing education courses or doing um, conferences or home study courses, we have that as well as $2,000 um, for full-time employees. If you're part-time, it's prorated to whatever your um, part-time position is. Um, I think, let me talk about a little bit about the size of the rehab department. Um, so currently we have about 60 PT, PTAs on staff, about 50 OTs, um, about 15 speech therapists and about 12 rehab aides. Um, on any given day, you cut that in half um, and that's about how many. So about for PT, about 30 PTs, um, PTAs in the building for any given day. So um, I think I think that's all I have for like upfront um, kind of thoughts. Um, we have a lot of different service lines that people um, work on. We are in the emergency room, we are in the PACU and everything in between. Um, neurosurgery, neurology, trauma, ortho, ortho trauma, general surgery, cardiac, uh, lung transplant, heart transplant, liver transplant, oncology, um, medical oncology, surgical oncology, psych. Um, are all kind of different service lines across the hospital that we're involved in, um, as well as the emergency department as well. So I think that is all I have up front to say. Um, can we open it up to questions? And Megan, while we're waiting for those to drop their questions in the chat, wanted to ask, could you just kind of explain um, just a day in the life of a physical therapist in your department? You know, how is it decided what their hours are, what unit they're going to, does it vary? Um, just kind of like that day-to-day -day what to expect should they get hired at Stanford? Gotcha. Yes, I can answer that. Um, so uh, 
hours that people work, it depends if you're hired full-time or part-time, but for full-time people, we start everybody Monday through Friday, uh, you know, eight to five-ish. Um, we are pretty flexible. We are non-union, so um, we kind of work with you on what your start time is. Um, uh, so yeah, eight to five is, is usually what we start. We do that for about the first six months, your probationary period. Um, and then after that, um, you have a conversation with your manager about your interests. So there are options for four tens um, positions. And we look at kind of what team you are on at that point um, and, or what units you're covering and what day off you might have that would work for you and us as a department and staffing purposes. Um, Units, again, we hire for the department, so we might start you on a unit that you are have experience with and are confident and comfortable in. Um, so for instance, a lot of people are like ortho is pretty easy, so we might start you there, um, be there for month, two months, three months, just to kind of get your feet wet, get comfortable with documentation, workflows, um, how everything kind of um, works with your colleagues, um, that sort of thing. And then we try to get people oriented to other areas. Um, it helps you learn and grow, which is what we are eager for everyone to do. But it also helps with staffing. Um, for instance, if you're on the weekend, um, if you can only go to ortho, that makes it a little bit challenging. Or if somebody calls out sick, it's hard to get up coverage other locations. So we want to make sure people get oriented other places. Um, and then a typical day in the life, staff come in, their schedule is done for them. Um, so you come in, you print out your schedule, you chart review. Um, we also have um, iPhones everybody picks up in the morning that have an app on it called Volt. Um, that connects actually to Epic. So when you log into Volt, it'll have a list of your patients. So you can click on that patient and it'll have a list of everyone who's assigned to that patient. Um, so you can text the nurse or call the nurse or text the case manager, call them. They can communicate with you. You can group text. Um, so it makes it easy to um, coordinate for co-treats or coordinate with the team. Um, if there's a discharge issue, that sort of thing. Um, we also, like I mentioned about the rehab aids, we have a really good rehab aid staff. Um, so lots of, um, co-treats with them. So coordinating with them, um, rounds as well. We attend, um, interdisciplinary town, uh, rounds pretty much on every unit, not every day. It depends on the unit, orthopedics, neurosurgery, uh, cardiac surgery are pretty much every day. Um, but the other units might be two weeks, two times a week or three times a week um, that we attend and take notes on those so that other people who might be on that unit um, have the information about when the patient might be discharging and that sort of thing to um, facilitate that. Um, you go and you see your patients. Um, again, we are across two buildings, but we currently try to co-locate people um, by service line and unit, which is kind of laid out nicely um, in the hospital that most of the patients, like all the neuro patients are in kind of over across one or two floors and uh, cardiac patients the same way. So we try to divide it so people aren't running all over the place and can be more efficient. Uh, efficient. Um, we also want to make sure that the interdisciplinary team is really strong. Um, you know the nurses, you know the APPs, you know the case manager, they know you and you build that trust and rapport with them. So um, yeah, so you go and you see your patients, um, uh, document, um, unassign yourself at the end of the day from your patients in Epic and that is your day. Um, sometimes during lunch we have in-services or team meetings. We just actually this morning had a department meeting um, from eight to nine, um, I think we counted 65 people were there, which is great. Um, we usually provide breakfast. We have journal clubs, um, lots of different things available. Um, students giving presentations because we're a teaching facility. So we do have um, uh, students of different disciplines here uh, presenting. So um, I think I answered all your questions, Carly. <laughs> okay, perfect. We did have um, a question in the chat. Alexi was asking, how many patients are typically seen per day? Gotcha. Um, so I will start with a, typically how many are on your list and then what the target is for um, kind of productivity or how many people typically see. Um, so it depends on the unit you're on. Um, if you're on like medicine or an ICU floor, 
Um, typically we're giving, or maybe in oncology as well, we might be giving 10 patients in an eight hour day. Um, for a 10 hour day, we might give you 10, 11, 12 patients, knowing that not all of those patients are gonna be appropriate um, or necessarily have needs that day. Um, your uh, OT or PT colleague might uh, be able to help screen some of those out for you. Um, but typically in an eight hour day, how many people end up seeing seven, eight, um, our goal for productivity is more um, units that you've charged. So our target for an eight hour day is 21 units. Um, and for a 10 hour day, I believe it's closer to 24 units. Um, so that's how much you're billing. And, um, but yeah, that's typically um, how it works. If you're on ortho, neuro, uh, cardiac, that, you know, usually eight to nine patients are how many you get because majority of the time all over those are appropriate. But if, if you run out of patients to see, we have an ongoing consult list. People are more than welcome to pick up throughout the day. You do not need to ask um, a manager or the scheduler um, to help pick those up. You can call a colleague, see if they need help, and you can pick up from there. Or if you are oriented to other units, you can more, more than happy to have you or um, float to the another unit to help pick up um, where another unit might be busy. So, thank you, Megan. Yeah. Um, so kind of moving a little bit more now into our openings, I know that you have various openings throughout the physical therapy department, you know, ranging from physical therapy one to physical therapist three. Mm -hmm. What are you ideally looking for in a candidate when they're applying? What are you hoping to see on their resume or their application? You know, do you take new grads? Do you prefer someone with experience? Does it matter if it's in, you know, acute care experience or if it's outpatient experience? Mm -hmm. Can you kind of just, um, you know, educate us on what that ideal candidate looks like for your department. Sure. Um, so we have several open positions right now, as Carly was mentioning. I think we have a couple full-time, a part-time, couple relief as far as the physical therapy um, positions are concerned. Um, when I am looking at um, applicants, um, I'm first looking to make sure that you have your board certification, which usually HR um, double checks, but I want to see, does anybody have additional certificates in um, they, their NCS, CCS, OCS, you know, um, the oncology certification, GCS, that sort of thing. Um, uh, also, what experience you have. Yes, we do take new grads. Um, it's kind of it depends. Like right now, I have several new grads, so to take more on um, would be a challenge because there's a lot of mentoring that we want to do. Um, so it's usually, you know, maybe a couple per year. Right now, I'm kind of at max capacity, but maybe later this year, I might be able to take um, uh, one or two additional uh, new grads. Um, I do like to see acute care experience. Um, and even if it's a new grad, if you've done an internship in an acute care um, environment, that is always helpful. Um, um, I also, with the acute care experience, is it at a level one? As, is it at a community hospital? That sort of thing. Um, those more, it makes it easier when people are hired in to, um, to kind of gel and make their transition into Stanford um, really easy. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, um, we are a level one trauma center, super high acuity level. Um, patients are being transferred from other states, even sometimes other countries to have care here. So um, the diagnoses we see are really challenging. And so if um, I don't want to put somebody, um, make it super challenging for somebody who's coming in from a skilled nursing facility or outpatient who hasn't seen this complexity of care, um, I, I you know, we can mentor a lot, but at the same time, that would make it more challenging. So I do um, prefer um, someone who's had acute care experience. Um, uh, as Carly was mentioning, we do have different levels. Currently, um, our levels are level one is kind of your new grad, first two years. Level two is two years and, um, and up. Um, and then level three is um, four years and up, but you do have to have an advanced certification um, for that. Um, we are working on a career ladder um, so that those things may be adjusted a bit. Um, and so it would be like applying to higher level things and making sure that you're uh, doing certain activities um, 
that keep you at that higher level um, of clinical expertise and knowledge and uh, community involvement, professionalism, that sort of thing. So. Thank you, Megan. I'll let you have a little breather there since you've been answering a lot of questions. And I'll move this over to Labrina, who is our talent acquisition manager who oversees the allied health roles here at Stanford to kind of go more into detail about the onboarding process, the interview process at Stanford and the benefits that we offer. Thanks, Carly. Hi, everyone. My name is Labrina Guyton, and I have the pleasure of working alongside with Megan for all of their staffing needs in physical therapy, occupational therapy, and rehab. So just a little bit about the interview process. All of our positions are posted online. Once you apply on our career site, I'm the one who is reviewing and screening all your applications, making sure that you have all of your certifications, and then I send those applications over to Megan and her team for review. They typically don't take much time at all to review your application. We are, if I send over a resume today, I would say by the end of the week or early next week, the application is reviewed and then somebody is usually in contact with you. Um, as far as the process goes, once they give you a call, they let us know if we're moving forward with you in the process. If you do move forward in the process, you would be working with me and an onboarding co um, coordinator to guide you through the process. So you would start with um, an occupational health screen, the general um, onboarding that you would go through typically with any company, um, occupational health screen, background check, that's all done. And that process usually takes about two to three weeks, usually about three weeks before it's complete. Uh, we're again checking to make sure that you have all your certifications. Once you get through that process, we're contacting you to let you know what your new hire start date is. Once you get your new hire start date, we're currently doing new hire orientation virtually. So you would be doing your new hire orientation virtually. Um, so that's a little bit about how the resume, the application process goes and the onboarding. I'll talk a little bit about our benefits, which I think we have a pretty good benefits or a really good um, benefits program, um, full medical, dental, and vision. Our retirement plan is a 403B plan. Um, so after your first year of employment, Stanford will automatically contribute 5% to your 403B. And who doesn't like free money? So 5% towards your 403B. If you do decide to contribute, Stanford will match your contributions dollar for dollar up to 5%. So potentially 10% could be coming from Stanford. And again, that's free money. So that's a little bit about the um, application process, a little bit about our benefits. You don't have to wait for a very long time before you're eligible for your benefits. If you were to start, let's say on June the 29th, technically you could be eligible for your benefits on July 1st. So your benefits would start on the first of the month following your date of hire. So that's a little bit about the process, the application process, and a brief overview of our benefits. Back over to you, Carly. Thanks, Labrina. Well, I feel like we've talked a lot about just the department overview opportunities, but Megan, I wanted to kind of ask, you know, you've been here so long. I feel like you've been at Stanford almost 20 years, I think. Uh, why have you stayed? What has made you love coming to work so much and made Stanford such a great place to work that you couldn't imagine working anywhere else? And what would you say to someone kind of like, well, I'm on the fence between Stanford and maybe another employer here in the Bay Area. Why pick Stanford? I'm happy to answer those. Um, yes. Yeah, so like I mentioned, I came to Stanford um, and I've been in multiple different roles. I actually came here as a new grad back in 2003. Um, and I uh, came in as per diem, and then about a year later, I uh, there was a full time job opportunity. So um, I was, I think, the only putty, only person who applied. So I got into that role, um, and I went back to per diem when I had kids, and then went back full time, and now I'm a manager. The reason I stay, and people, we get this question a lot of times um, when I'm doing um, phone calls with applicants or during interview processes we have a lot of people who have been here for a long time and why do you stay? Um, and it's such a good question. Um, I stay because of the people that I work with. Um, everybody's eager to learn. Everybody's eager to um, improve processes, um, improve quality, um, that, you know, evidence-based practice, what's the newest thing? What's the best thing? How can we progress our patients? Um, so there's always something to work on, um, whether it's us pushing ourselves or the doctors got to have a new 
surgical technique or something we have to learn that we're we're always interested in it and so that kind of motivation is um good to have around you um similarly to that um i'm never bored um at least as a frontline therapist as well as a manager um so frontline therapists you um there was a question in the chat somewhere about do you float unit to unit not necessarily in one day, but at the same time, you you might be split on two different units in a day. So you might see a heart transplant and a Moya Moya surgery where they do an ECIC bypass for neurosurgery. Um, those you wouldn't see at uh, the community hospital down the street. Um, there are a couple level one trauma centers in the area um, that are I guess our competitors, uh, we work with them a lot on different things. Um, but I would say that Stanford has a reputation of teaching, learning, quality. Um, and uh, from just a selfish point of view, I think our team is really good. Um, we have a lot of good resources here as well, um, whether it's different equipment, um, different projects that you can be on, our benefits are really good, um, that sort of thing. So. Um, think I answered your questions. <laughs> you did great. Um, and kind of piggybacking on all that, you know, one of the questions that we get a lot of times just across the enterprise when people are looking to join Stanford, how do you feel that um, you've cultivated the culture on your unit? Obviously, you love those that you work with. Do you guys do, you know, activities out in the community together? Do you do activities, you know, within the hospital? Are there different ways to get involved at Stanford that you see a lot of your physical therapists do to kind of build, you know, that whole career outlook, you know, where they're networking with other people at the hospital, they're being a part of communities or employee resource groups, you know, helping them kind of grow as a person, you know, what opportunities, I guess, are there available, especially for maybe those that are relocating and looking for a little community once they start at a new position? Yes. Um, so we have lots of different things that people get involved in. Um, starting small, you have the rehab department. Um, we have a rehab council. It's interdisciplinary. I think there's about 10 or 11 people on it right now. I'm actually the manager who kind of oversees it. Um, so we are involved in actually doing those community outings. So there's an MS walk coming up so up in San Francisco. So we're trying to get a team together to do that. Um, we are celebrating, we just celebrated our OT colleagues for OT month, um, having a lunch for them and an ice cream social. Um, it's now a May is better speech and hearing month. So we're celebrating our speech colleagues with something similar. Um, there is not a dedicated rehab aid month, but we have um, labeled July as rehab aid month. So we're doing something for then. And then of course, PT month in October. Um, we do go out into the community to do different things. Like I mentioned, the MS walk, um, there is a, a golf a tournament for stroke survivors um, that some of our therapists have been involved in. Um, there might be the, um, I can't remember the name exactly off the top of my head, but it's like a heart walk. Um, LPCH puts on something for the for children's care, so we get involved with that. Um, there's also shared leadership committee here at Stanford um, that we have, I think, actually about five therapists um, involved in. It's an interdisciplinary, hospital-wide um, council, nurses, respiratory therapists, dietitians, um, who work on some of the issues that come up every day um, and try to improve the process. Um, so for instance, we're working on bariatrics right now. Um, we struggle when a patient, um, a bariatric patient comes in through the emergency department and then gets up to the unit and we don't have all the equipment right then to try to mobilize these patients. So um, we're trying to build some kind of flag in the system that if their weight is over something or their height is high or low, um, you know, short in stature or um, super tall to make sure that the equipment, you know, if they get admitted, that the equipment is brought to the room, um, whether it's bariatric, a tall walker, a low bed, you know, that sort of thing to make sure that the patients have um, what they need. So shared leadership works on that kind of stuff. Um, and then down to the unit level to, um, like I said, um, I'm actually, I think I didn't mention it, but I'm the manager over different service lines. So um, I am over neurosurgery, neurology, and the emergency department. So kind of all the projects that are happening on those units. Um, and right now, uh, neurosurgery is working on a length of stay uh, initiative to try to um, 
decrease the length of stay and improve discharge process. And so it's interdisciplinary, but I do have frontline staff who are involved in it as well from their frontline perspective. What are the um, issues that come up every day on the unit? Um, so we definitely pull people in um, for those different activities. Um, uh, like I mentioned before, there's journal clubs um, that are uh, voluntary, but a lot of people want to get involved. Um, you know, it's like the neuros team this month. And so PTO team speech will each have a different journal article that they're going to go over during the journal club. Um, we uh, bring pizza, uh, free pizza, free lunch for everybody when they uh, go to journal clubs. So to try to motivate people to participate. So, um, but yeah, those are a couple of the different things I think that people um, get involved with on a pretty regular basis. Awesome. Thank you so much, Megan. I feel like the last three months we've learned so much about the physical therapy department and just a lot of the questions that we hear from potential candidates asking, you know, about shift, about floating, you know, just about career ladder opportunities. If there was someone on the fence about applying, um, obviously they'll be reaching out to Labrina, but is there something you would want them to know that maybe would give them that kind of nudge to go ahead and apply? Yeah, um, I would say there's a lot of opportunity um, for growth here. Um, like I said, we're just, we got the sign off for our career ladder. We're just trying to dot some I's and cross some um, T's um, before we progress with that. Um, but yeah, I would say um, between the benefits package, the large team that we have that's supportive, um, you're essentially never by yourself with, um, you know, just on a unit covering somebody. There's always somebody there to ask questions and answer questions um, for you. Um, uh pretty collaborative um the culture here for rehab and i think the organization is quality and learning and teaching and education of um of others um so we're always um, included in different things to try to educate um, others and um, promote our discipline um uh, nursing week is coming up so we have a, a booth um, for them to educate them on what rehab does um I'm trying to think of other things. The the new residents that are coming on um, in July, which is like just around the corner, um, we get involved on the unit level, on the team level, and educating them on what our disciplines do. So, which is always um, so nice. Um, I remember doing it as a frontline therapist many years ago to the neurosurgery and neurology residents, and and sitting next to them, you know, in the workroom and teaching them how to do things and what we do and. Uh, and stuff. And so uh, it just, it feels good um, to be able to work and uh, collaborate with others and teach others about our discipline. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Labrina, I'm going to kind of kick it back to you real quick. So if someone, you know, they're watching this and they're like, okay, I'm definitely interested. I want to learn more about the different opportunities that we have available. What is the best way for them to reach you? Um, whether it's LinkedIn, email, you know, what can they expect in terms of when they should be able to hear from someone, anything you want them to know, like when you apply, please make sure you do A, B, or C. Um, and then you've been here now almost four years. I think it's going to be four years in August. So I kind of want to hear from you too. What's kept you at Stanford? What makes you love coming to work every day? Just so they know that it's not just physical therapy. It's kind of enterprise wide. People love coming to work at Stanford every day. Thanks, Carly. So I, the reason I love coming to work, uh, people say when you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work. I don't know who said that, but I love that quote because it's very true. I get to work with some amazing people every single day. I have fun at work every day. Don't get me wrong. Um, there are some days when it is uh, very busy. Um, I won't say challenging. I'll just say busy. So the time does go by really quickly and you're looking up and already the day is at the end of the day and you're you're kind of trying to figure out where the time went. But that's a good thing because um, being busy makes the time go by very fast. And again, what you love, when you love what you do, it doesn't feel like work. I would say to anybody who's on the fence, I'm going to take a quote from Nike and say, just do it. This team is the most amazing team, one of the most amazing teams that I've worked with. Megan and her group are very, very supportive. Typically, when we go to any of the job fairs for their group, she's always there to answer questions. Um, a lot of times people will go for attending the courses, but Megan is there to help out with any questions that anybody that comes by the booth has about Stanford. So again, if you're on the fence, just you know, hit that trigger on apply and go ahead and apply. Um, please link 
pick up with me or connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm on LinkedIn. So if you send me a message, let me know that you saw the live and that you're interested in more opportunities or just any information in general, happy to connect with you and share more feedback on why I think Stanford is the place to be. Back to you, Carly. Thank you, Sabrina. All right, everyone. Well, that wraps up our time here on today's Stanford Life. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, at the end of this, we will be going in on the various platforms and the comments and linking Labrina's contact information um, and a couple of our physical therapy openings so you can take a look. Again, any questions, feel free to reach out to Labrina. You've gotten to know Megan. It's who you'll be interviewing with and working with. Um, so hopefully you've gotten a great perspective on just the team that you'll be joining and why Stanford would be a great move for you for your next career opportunity. Um, so everyone enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Thanks so much.